Hello, and welcome back to Forensic Bytes. We're launching into our new series on presumptive testing in forensic science, and we're going to start with Mayer's reagent, and why it's awful, but that's okay. What we're going to cover is what is Mayer's reagent, what does Mayer's reagent react with, why would I be calling it awful, and why does it being awful actually make it rather useful in a forensic context. Use of Mayer's reagent didn't start with the forensic sciences. Instead, it was used as an analytical test for alkaloids in areas such as food science, soil science, toxicology, and other areas such as medicine. Later, it was taken up by the forensic community as a presumptive test for certain illicit drugs, provided that they too could be classed as alkaloids. Mayer's test is extremely non-specific, and it gives rise to many false positives including most of the plant alkaloids. Looking at its structure, Mayer's reagent is a mercuric compound, meaning that it contains mercury in solution. It is made when mercuric chloride is combined with potassium iodide in deionized water. The iodide anions bind weakly to the metal, and these can be easily displaced on the introduction of a coordinating ligand. Alkaloids, conversely, are low molecular weight chemicals with a basic nitrogen group that is capable of coordinating to a metal. The example shown on the right is quinoline, which is one of the simplest alkaloids, whereby we have a basic nitrogen atom shown here. When the nitrogen of the alkaloid binds to the mercury, an iodide is displaced, which lowers the overall charge of the complex. The addition of two alkaloids results in a neutral complex that has low solubility in water. This culminates in the formation of a yellow to white precipitate, depending on the identity of the alkaloid. This precipitation event is what's considered a positive result for Mayer's reagent. On the right, we can see the soluble form of mercuric iodide, and it's an ionic species, with a 2 minus charge, which is balanced by two potassium ions. Below it is the insoluble mercury alkaloid complex, and we can see that this liberates two equivalents of potassium iodide. Given that the complex is no longer charged, it is much less soluble in water, giving rise to the precipitate. So what kinds of illicit drugs are there that are alkaloid in nature? Well, it turns out that many illicit drugs fulfill the requirement of being a small molecule with a basic amine. All of the examples shown on the right morphine, methamphetamine, and cocaine, all will complex to mercuric iodide to generate a precipitate. For this reason, Mayer's reagent can't provide you with information on a drug's class. Its reactivity is simply too broad. Similarly, there are many legal drugs that also fulfill the requirements of being a small molecule containing a basic amine functionality. These can be considered false positives. So if we look at the examples on the right, we can see quinine, which is present in tonic water, caffeine, which we're, I'm sure, all familiar with, and diphenhydramine, which is a common antihistamine compound, I think found in Benadryl. Given the prevalence of alkaloids throughout chemistry, Mayer's reagent is best utilised early in an identification sequence. There, the fact that it has low discriminatory power is actually useful for quickly honing in on what the potential drug class could be for a generic white powder found at a crime scene. So here we can see the workflow diagram for the various presumptive tests when confronted with the white powder problem. And we can see that the very first test is Mayer's reagent. And the reason for that is that either a positive or a negative result by Mayer's reagent will exclude several different classes of drug. So for example, if we get a positive presumptive test for Mayer's reagent, we can exclude barbiturates as well as certain hallucinogens as the identity for our white powder. Conversely, if we get a negative result with Mayer's reagent, we can exclude the opioids, amphetamines, and cocaine as being the identity of the white powder. For this reason, its non-specificity allows us to eliminate several different types of presumptive tests from our workflow. So to conclude, Mayer's reagent is a presumptive test for alkaloid drugs that suffers from a high rate of false positives. However, this broad reactivity towards multiple drug classes is actually useful, as it allows us to quickly exclude several candidates that the white powder could have been. It does suffer from some safety issues, as all mercury compounds will, but it is relatively simple to perform, 
hence why it's often used early in drug identification sequences. That's all for today, and thanks for listening.